Thank you, Liz. Thank you, uh, everyone, for being here. It's truly an honor, and I'm um, I'm a bit overwhelmed, not because of the number of people, maybe that, but also as I see all of you who are listening in or watching in today. Um, I honor each of your stories, and I wish that we were sitting in a circle here today to share um, versus me being the keynote. That's not my favorite thing to keynote, but um, but I was asked to share my story. And as I have grown in my years, I've been encouraged by my elders and my mentors and my grandmothers and my grandfathers to tell my story. And um, it feels emotional, it feels personal, it feels vulnerable. And I share it to plant seeds with you. Let me be. Let me begin by telling you who I am. Who's you? I mean, Anan Agura Giwedenu Nindidijikas, Ontario, Canada, Nindidijiba, Brainerd Baxter, Idash Nindanungum. I tell you hello, my relatives. You know me as Joy Prasal. I have told you my spirit name, my traditional name, Northern Star. My family immigrated, I put in quotes, illegally again, in quotes, to the United States in Michigan via Ontario, Canada. I currently reside on Dakota Anishinaabe Metis territory south of what is now known as the towns of Brainerd, Baxter, Minnesota. I'm French Canadian, I'm Irish, I'm English, and I'm very proud to be an Ojibwe Metis descendant removed from my ancestors' homelands and community. Thank you. Thank you again for this opportunity to share with you in sacred story on sacred ground, in spirit and reverence for this Mother Earth. There's gonna be some photos showing um, part of the time that I speak and I hope that you will enjoy them for what they are. They're photos I have taken or were taken of me in a couple cases. Um, that tell you a little bit of the visual story of my life, some places I've lived, and I'll tell you about that as we go along. Um, some of the things that I have grown, some of the things that I have found on my journey, and I hope you will enjoy them in the spirit of regrowth, of regeneration, of sustainability, and in my purpose, planting seeds. So I ask you now to imagine, let's imagine sitting together here in a circle on logs, on blankets, on the grass, on the edge of the riverbank, in the garden, passing our time, listening to the earth, listening to each other, listening to the eagles, listening to the birds listening to all that I do not know their names or their sounds. This experience of seeking alignment with spirit and peace and planting the seeds of regeneration, of living into sharing this love of spirit, becoming human in each of us and seeding reverence for her, this earth. We, the collective are in process of transformation. What we do is important and how we do this, the collective together, how we do this is critical. It was the seeds of my ancestors, of my grandparents, the love for humankind that gave me life and communicated to me that I was loved beyond measure. From the beginning, from the seedling start, it has emboldened me and energized me to honor this earth. And again, on this day, this earth day, every day with intentionality. In that spirit of reverence, I'd like you to consider where you sit today, what is within your reach. As you sit in your room or in your yard on this Zoom, what can you hold in your hands? 
What sits in your lap? What are your feet touching? What can your hands touch? What can your eyes or ears rest upon that remind you of the unique nature of this earth? If you're sighted, please close your eyes and remember. Feel deeply within your body what is your relationship to this, to those around you, this earth. What has she provided you? What connects you to her? Her soul work. I shared tomatoes with my daughter some years ago. And as she learned to regenerate food for her family, she put 30 seeds in a pot. 30 seeds look like a chia pet of tomatoes. So we talked about how to encourage one or two to grow, and she had to let some fall away. And out of that, then she grew a beautiful, huge heirloom tomato plant that generated for her dozens out of one seed. We don't need 30 seeds. <laughs> 30 feet is powerful, but if we have one, what can we provide? For me, regeneration and reclaiming and renew, renewing, renewing, it's the passing on of seeds and stories and lessons of hope. We planted one grape plant in my backyard in Robbinsdale when I lived there. Two years later, this is some of the harvest. 30 little jugs of grape juice that we've spent a year enjoying. From my ancestors and my grandparents to my grandchildren, which I call my heartberries, I seed hope, hope a positive energy and spirit that lives beyond the measure of white supremacy, that has normalized ways of being, that are rolled out in measured oppression and dis-ease for others, to the extent that we experience dis-ease with this earth. Earth versus another. It's an integral part of life, in fact, the life giver and the future of all living beings, four legged, winged ones, those that slither and the plants and the bugs and the bees and the medicines that grow and the water, the core of our existence. This, the Mississippi, the core of our body and earth, sacred water. The prayers we breathe, air, fresh, clean air, life. I read a quote by E.B. White that has hung with me for years. It is my purpose. I get up every morning determined to both change the world and have one hell of a good time. And sometimes this makes plan planning my day difficult. I've held a childhood vision, a dream of growing foods and sharing them and living near water. I carry that dream forward to today to rise with my heart berries, provide them with seeds that carry on for generations and learn with them as we grow our ancestor seeds in new earth, in a changing climate, from a paradigm of manifest destiny and dominion and colonization into a paradigm of collective action with her mother earth. In my work, in my day, and sometimes weekends and nights, I serve the community as a leadership coach and an organizational gardener. In my family and in my daily practice, I ask, how are we doing together? Are we listening to each other? My husband and I recently moved out of the city to acreage on the Mississippi River with the acreage of prairie out front where horses have trod. We traded in a beautiful yard we invested in for a decade in a beautiful garden just a block from a grocery store to a home surrounded by pine forests, prairie, hardwoods, and water. And this morning, two eagles flew by our house, up and down the river fishing. Uh, we've seen swans and ducks and cranes and river otters and porcupines and raccoons and chipmunks and squirrels and 
pigeons and woodpeckers and so many sounds of birds I do not know. I need your help. Sometimes we hear tractors and cars and trucks, civilization. Sometimes we hear blasts from Fort Ripley, Ripley across the road and dogs barking in the distance. We're reminded in the quiet to listen for the familiar and the new sounds. We're reminded in the midst of the noise to listen to the complexity of all the sounds and sort through what is important. In this moment, actions toward a vision of peace and what is enough. We're starting new again on this land and carry our lessons forward, leaning into new lessons with others, for others. My son and his growing family also moved out of the city onto land they call North Lakes Farm. Some of you I know began to grow uh, or purchase pork or perhaps chicken or eggs or vegetables from them. A few years ago, they began this vision of a sustainable life and making their farm into a business that supplied people with healthy foods and regenerated the soil they lived on. Building onto these new old relationship ways of being with human and earth and these choices challenge notions of scale in this world, in this society. The regeneration, the practices of the soil and the animal plants that we're leaning into these more localized systems of living and recognizing the delicate and complex needs for global responses and our dependency on each other for life. Earth Day is a day set aside to remember. I remember in most locations my family lived. We resided from homes with no running water to a mobile home on the vast prairie that was turned and overturned into hundreds of acres sections of wheat fields in Colorado to an adobe home in the desert of New Mexico where we cleaned up the residue left behind. We nourished the soil with the manure from our animals, our workhorse, our milk cow, our chickens, and planted seeds, my responsibilities. It was my job to tend to their growth, to cover them with straw, to water them, to weed them, to protect them, to harvest them, to put them up for food for the lean winter of unknown income, unknown employment, and yet the bounty that we shared when our family gathered. It was my responsibility to ensure that what was fed, that what fed us was cared for before I fed myself. It's a practice ingrained in my intentional and yet automatic reactions to this day. To feed before I feed myself. I remember this at a cellular level. I ask, what do you remember at a cellular level, at your heart, at your soul level, about your relationship to the earth and what she can sustain as a gift for you? What was or is your role in sustaining her today? I am the Nana. I am the grandma that crawls with the babies to discover the homes of ants and build relationships with them. And I toddle to the raspberries as the little ones discover the sweetness of fresh fruit. Earth Day is a day set aside to reflect. As I wake up each day at this new location on Earth, I feel invited by the call of the birds to listen and learn who they are and why they are and where they come from and where they go and how they live. I am invited to listen in the silence and stillness to breath of the trees, the scent of cedar, to observe my path well-traveled, revealing new gifts to me each day. I notice the medicines of sage growing in strength along a beaten path, along a ditch, 
I noticed the raspberries in huge gatherings in the field. And I know none of this actually belongs to me. And so I reflect on the gifts of earth that I take responsibility for, that I feed first. I reflect on the actions I take as I feel directly charged with their collective care on this earth. Earth Day is a day set aside to disrupt old patterns, breathe when we find ourselves holding our breath, walk when we find our bodies aching from sitting, listen to stillness when the chatter of commentary becomes too flooded to hear Mother Earth. Her heart is beating rhythms that are intrinsically tied with ours spirits trying to become human until we return to spirit. I quote Chief Joseph of the Nez Perce. We live, we die, and like the grass and trees, renew ourselves from the soft earth of the grave. Stones crumble and decay, faiths grow old and they are forgotten, but new beliefs are born. The faith of the villages is dust now but it will grow again, like the trees. I've left some of my belief systems behind, some of those that I was raised in, and I hold firmly onto others, and I'm forming new belief systems. It was a disruption. It's still a disruption. It has become a challenge and a beautiful spirit-filled discovery and often a rediscovery of my ancestors' purpose for me and my purpose and strength of spirit. As I focus on planting seeds and that will sustain our life, I found it necessary to examine these belief systems and my practices, and my automatics, and allow them to be disrupted and challenged in order to grow. I've experienced the effect of herbicides and mercury poisoning and depletion of the soil, of birth defects and death of livestock and plants we intended to eat in, line in lean times. I've experienced the loss of family to cancers and death, an illness of unknown or unclaimed cause, as in many aspects of my desire to survive and thrive as a family and in community, I made a plan and it disrupted a lot of norms. And yet this disruption is also under my control. And what behaviors are, what my behaviors and my attitude is toward earth, peace, reconciliation, and justice for the mother, this earth who serves us all, who is giving her all as we continue to extract plans back to my childhood have been anchored in a dream of giving back to form a home where we can gather as community as family in reverence for this gift of earth where we will celebrate by planting an orchard to bear fruit for our heartberries children's children's children where we will relearn how to heal ourselves in the earth where we will relearn to tend to mother together so we can be in reciprocity with each other. I've disrupted a lot of patterns in my lifetime. I'm curious, what patterns have you disrupted? And what patterns are you rebuilding? What can you disrupt and renew today, this Earth Day? I started a temperature blanket. Some of you may know it's crochet. You can do it on a lot of things. It was too to begin a ritual in this new space of marking every day and the temperature that we have every day so that I'm increasingly mindful of the climate we live in and how it changes and can carry that story forward to those who aren't there in that belief system yet. It's a gentle way for me to disrupt in my own family sometimes the act of creating. This new ritual has connected my fingers to cotton, to a fabric of the earth. 
it creates a ritual for me to slow down and to listen and to observe. What are your rituals to disrupt that slow you down so you can create a new? Earth Day is a day set aside to listen. There have been moments in my life where I didn't listen. I heard the sounds or perhaps I thought it was just noise, but I did not always listen. It's an intentional behavior I continue to lean into, especially when I find myself resisting what it may require of me. I find myself resisting what it may require of me. It requires I shift the use of my time, reprioritizing learning and curiosity and discovery and release and renewal and rest and trying with renewed attention again tomorrow. Earth Day is a day set aside to remember, reflect, disrupt old patterns, listen and begin new behaviors with new intentions. And as you honor this day, I hope you will join me in this intentional act of finding ways to regenerate each day going forward to sustain this work of going forward, to sustain this work of the Minnesota Power Interfaith Light, to offer this time to the earth, to feed her as you feed the organization, as you feed those you are committed to, to share your resources and honor the resources that you come from. Thank you, and may we be spirit-led. May we be good ancestors on this sacred ground. Miigwech. Joy, thank you so much. Friends, we have a few more minutes that we get to um, share in the wisdom of joy. And so this is an invitation that if you have a question that you would like to ask, um, we have some time here for a few short questions. You're welcome to add them in the chat. We did get one beautiful question from Phil, if you might be so moved to, to in your most joyful disruption. What has been my most joyful disruption? Yeah. Oh my goodness. My most joyful disruption has been speaking up against the dominant narrative of who I am and where I come from and who my children are. That that disruption has created ripples and waves of love um, for them and deep sense of acceptance into this human world. And I believe, I know, has allowed them to carry their story forward, proud of who they are in all their richness. And I have a diversity of family from many countries and walks of life and genders and income levels. And we are all here proud of who each other are as humans becoming spirit and proud of our roots as indigenous people in various countries. Um, that has been, I think, the biggest disruption in my family, claiming who we are, um, not out of shame, but out of pride. 